Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can work with two-way tables. And I've got a couple of examples here which hopefully will demonstrate this. And from the tables, we'll be able to work out various probabilities. So, starting with this first one here, and by the way, you might want to pause the video after I've run through some of these ideas and tackle, say, this second example. And so for this first example, we've got a class of 19 students, eight of which are boys, and they're asked whether they have school lunch or not. And something like this can be represented then in what we call a two-way table. I'll show you. It looks something like this. We have our two-way table in here, okay, where we have two cells here in the first row, and two cells here in the second row. And we've got labels on the outside where we've got clearly boys and girls, two options here. And we have the fact that a student can take either school lunch or no school lunch. And these cells around the outside give us totals. This cell here will tell us the total of the number of boys in the survey or sample that we're taking. Similarly, this cell here gives us the total for all the girls. This cell here will give us the total for all school lunches. And this cell here will be the total for no school lunches. And this cell will be the total for everything. And in this case, we've got a class of 19 students. So we put, say, 19 in there. Now, we're told of these 19 students, eight are boys. So we can clearly put an eight in this cell here for the total of all the boys. And so obviously that leaves us with a total of 11 girls. Now, when the students are asked whether they have school lunch or not, we're told that four girls take a school lunch. So we can put in here for the girls taking a school lunch, there must be four. And we've got five boys do not take a school lunch. So the five boys that do not take a school lunch must go there. And it's very easy now just to fill in the remaining cells. Obviously, if we've got a total of eight boys, we've got five already having no school lunch. So that would leave us with another three that do take school lunch. For the girls, we've got a total of 11 girls, four take school lunch, so four from 11 leaves us with seven. So seven girls must not take a school lunch. And for the totals here, for how many take a school lunch, it'll be just simply three add four, which is seven. And for no school lunch, it'll be five add seven, which will be 12. And we should find that seven plus 12 gives us that 19 again, just as a valuable check. Okay, so that's a simple two-way table. And from this, we should be able to answer the following questions, where we're told that a student is chosen at random, and we've got to calculate the following probabilities. And the first one is that a boy takes a school lunch. So for a boy to take a school lunch, then we're looking at the number of boys who take a school lunch, which is clearly three boys out of a total of 19. So the answer to that is going to be three nineteenths. Now, if you're using set notation, then this would be described as the probability of B intersected or and L. OK, where B is the probability of selecting a boy and that boy having lunch. And so that's going to equal three nineteenths. Now for the next one, very similar, the probability that a girl is chosen and does not take a school lunch. So what would that be? Well, we'll be looking along the girls and the ones that don't take a school lunch. And that's going to be seven. So we've got a total of seven girls do not take a school lunch 
out of 19. So that answer there for number 2 is going to be 7 nineteenths. And again, if you're using set notation to describe that, it will be the probability that a girl is chosen and, or the intersection symbol, doesn't take a school lunch, so it won't be L, so you can use the complement symbol, which will be either a dash there, or sometimes you might want to put a bar over the top of the L. It's up to you. Okay, so that probability then is going to be 7 nineteenths. Now, with question 3, it varies a little from what we've got here in 1 and 2. This time, we're given that a boy is chosen. So what's the probability he takes a lunch? So if we're given that a boy is chosen, we know that we have got eight boys. So what's the probability that that boy takes lunch? So it's going to be that three out of eight boys that are chosen. So that answer would be three out of eight for number three. And if you are using set notation for this, you might not have covered this at this stage, but we would write this as the probability of lunch being taken given, and we use this symbol for given, that a boy was already chosen. And so that would be equal to 3 eighths. And in question 4, it's very similar. With this one, we're given that a girl is chosen. What's the probability then that she does not take a lunch? So if a girl is chosen, that's out of 11 girls, what's the probability that she does not take lunch? So that's going to be 7. 7 out of 11. So that answer then is 7 out of 11. And the notation we would use would be the probability that no lunch is chosen given that a girl was chosen here. Okay. Now I've got a, another example here and you might like to just pause the video then, read through it and give it a go. And when you come back, I'll take you through the work solutions. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. So for this one, I'd draw up a table, say something like this. I've got here that we've got the male or female. Obviously, you could have men, women there. And I've labelled it disease and no disease. But you might label it no cure and a cure. So that's up to you. But we'll insert our numbers now into this. So we're told then that in a recent trial to test the effectiveness of a drug curing a disease on a sample of 10 men and 15 women, we've got the following results were recorded. Well, let's first of all just put in the 10 men and the 15 women. So we know that we've got 10 in here and we've got 15 in here. We can't fill in any more of these cells yet until we carry on reading and we're told that the following results were recorded. Three women who took the drug still had the disease after taking it. So that means that we would have three in here and we can fill in this one here just by doing three from 15 that's going to give us 12. And then we read on that the same was true with two men. Two men still had the disease after taking the drug. So we'd need to put a two in there. And we can fill this cell in because two from 10 would just leave us with eight. And we can fill in the column here, two and three for the total five. Five people still had the disease after taking the drug. And then for no disease after taking the drug, being cured if you like, that's going to be a total of 8 plus 12, 20. And the overall total here will be 25 when you either add up the 10 and the 15 or the 5 and the 20. So now we can go on then and work out these probabilities. So for the first one, the probability then that a male is chosen and cured by the drug. Well, that's going to be that 8 there, that they have no disease after taking the drug. Okay, 
8 out of a total of 25. So that would be 8 out of 25. And if you're using set notation to describe this, you'd use something like this. The probability that you've got a male and they are cured by the drug. So in other words, they have no disease. So if I had D for disease, then this would be no disease afterwards. And that would be equal then to 8 25ths. For number two, a female is chosen and cured by the drug. So what we've got is a female is chosen and cured by the drug. That's going to be 12 females out of 25. So that's going to be 12 out of 25. And similarly, if you're using set notation here, it's going to be the probability that a female is chosen and cured by the drug. So they're going to have no disease. So that's going to be D with a complement symbol there. Okay. And finally, in number three, We've got here that given that a male was chosen, they were cured by the drug. So we're given this time that a male was chosen, so we know that that's out of 10 males. And they were cured by the drug, so that means they have no disease. So that's going to be 8 out of 10. So you're going to have 8 out of 10 for that probability. You might like to reduce it down cancel it by two top and bottom and that's going to give you four fifths and with set notation that's going to be the probability that given a male so we put the given sign there for the male okay and they are cured by the drug so that means they have no disease after taking the drug okay probability of d complement given that it's a male and that equals eight tenths so I was giving you some idea then on using two-way tables.